下个月不不能开了，这个新车了。是吗？这些车不能开了。为什么？为什么？他没有提出那那个广告来。哦。开了嘛。啊、哦，谢谢。This guy said that I'm not allowed to ride this kind of bike next month. Shut up. They say that every year. Um, anyway, sorry for the clickbait title, but it's, it's very true. Uh, last year I paid somebody um, a good amount of money to, to make one of my favorite cars, actually. I got an IS200 as a base, which is an Altezza to some of you, a Lexus. And uh, got an engine swap in there and uh, paid quite a bit of money for it. And uh, the guy that did it, I didn't know him that well, but um, he was within a circle of friends, I suppose. And uh, it turns out him and his family and a bunch of his friends have some pretty pretty dark dark secrets, you know. They're, they're in some shady business and they, they often get into situations where they owe money because uh, they'll start a business on a loan or get loans from shadow banks or something like that. And um, he, apparently he owed money to someone. Anyway, he needed to help me uh, re-register my car because I got the engine swap, so I give it back to him, you know, in full trust. And uh, he never gave it back. And he said for the past five months now, oh, next week, next week I'm going to get it, next week I'm going to get it, with varying levels of excuses. Now. If I was back home, I could legally, you know, take action. But here in China, especially in a small city like this, where someone is deeply connected to the mafia and kind of just bad, they're well above the law, so any threats about calling the police and whatnot are just kind of laughable, to be honest. I shouldn't check out girls on camera. Um, they're laughable, to be honest, and there's nothing I can do. I've tried to appeal to him many times, and one night I got really angry, uh, and I had been drinking with Prozzi, and I called him, and I just released a torrent of swear words and made threats, saying, my kid's going to come out, I need my car back, how am I supposed to drive my wife to the hospital? And uh, so I said, give me a car, or something's going to happen. So that's where that pink rimmed, uh, what's it called, Mazda 3 came into play. Uh, you guys probably saw that on uh, in the intro, obviously. Anyway, I get that car, and the uh, it just keeps dying because the electronics are all messed up. So I'm like, can you sort this out? Because it's getting ridiculous, you know. So he gets that, and then he doesn't give that back, and he stops returning my calls. So I freak out on him again. I'm at the, at the point where I'm like not even scared. Like, I, I, it's just these dealing with these kind of people. Like, I'm. I feel like he probably like sold my car, even though he keeps telling me it's there and he's gonna get it for me. He probably sold my car to pay off some debt, and I have no really no recourse. I mean, I've talked to some more influential people in my life, and they're like, "There's nothing, nothing you can do." except try to convince him that he owes you something, but he's, he, you're not going to get him in trouble. He's not scared of anything. Um, so that's a real great situation I got myself into. And it's one of those times when you really miss the systems that are in place back home that can help you in, in legal action and whatnot. And it's also another disclaimer, if you want to if you want the same stuff or the same lifestyle that you have back home in China, number one, you're going to pay more. And number two, um, number two, it's much easier to lose things here. Uh, whether it's theft or people tricking you, trickery and things like that. It's just sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it sucks.